Y'all ready to rock? Okay, perfect. So new chapter today, right? We started by talking about just in general what a polygon is and then some angle measures, but then we mostly um, spend our time on quadrilateral, which is just a specific kind of polygon. Okay, but more on that later in the week. But today let's just focus on a polygon. Does anyone know what it is? Shape like five sides. That's a pentagon, so you're close. You're on the right track. Sides. What's that? That's five sides, isn't it? Yes, this is just a type of polygon. A polygon is just any figure that's made up of straight sides. So the biggest thing you need to know it needs to be straight sides and close. So it can't have any openings on it. So a polygon is formed by three or more segments called sides. So as long as it has three or more sides, it is polygon. Um, two of our sides of the polygon intersect at an endpoint called, what would we call these red dots? Do you guys know where those two sides touch? Starts with a V. Anyone? A vertex? Yeah. So all these like little corners, of our polygon are called vertex or a vertice. If you wanted to name a polygon, you would just say polygon and then list your vertices. And it doesn't matter which um, one you start at as long as you just kind of go in order from there. So if we want to start at T, you could say T, P, Q, R, S. Polygon T P Q R S. And then the last part of just kind of learning about a polygon is name the diagonals from vertex R. You don't have an idea what your diagonals would be? No? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's perfect. RP would be one and RT. The reason why like RS doesn't work is because that's a side. It's not going through our shape, so it has to be like RT and RP. Yep, awesome. So again, a polygon is a closed figure made up of straight sides where two sides intersect is called a vertex. Um, you can have a polygon that's either convex or concave, which is kind of a way to like classify them. Let's start with the easier one, concave. Do you guys see how this shape comes in on itself? It caves inward, so that makes it concave. It caves in. Whereas convex, you see how all of your corners kind of pop out, none of them fall in the interior of our shape. So it's convex. Let's see if we can identify if these figures are polygons, so they have to be made up of straight sides. And they have to be closed. And if it is a polygon, is it convex or concave? So if we look at A, do you guys think A is a polygon? Yeah. Yeah, it's made up of straight sides and they're all closed, right? There's no opening. So this would be yes. It's a polygon. And would you say that's convex or concave? Concave. Concave. Correct. What about B? Is it polygon? Mm -hmm. Yep. Convex or concave? Okay. Convex, perfect. C? Is it polygon? Yes. Yep, sure is. Convex or concave? Convex. Convex. 
That is it. What about D? Why is it no? Yeah, it's curved right there, right? It's rounded, it's not straight. So we'll say no, it's curved or it's round. Yeah, yeah. What about E? Nope. Nope, why not? Yeah, it's missing a chunk, it's open. And then F is probably the trickiest one. What do you guys think? You think it's yes? I think it's fifty shot, right? It's all, it's all straight line, it's just this, the middle is confusing. Yes, your lines are all straight. The only issue with this one, though, is our sides can't crisscross right there. We can't have that. It kind of needs to be like hollow in the middle. It has to be like that. all has to be open. So we're gonna say no because it crisscrosses our sides intersect. Do we feel okay about deciding if something's a polygon and it's just convex or concave? Yeah. Pretty easy. Okay. Flip it over. We're then going to just talk about one more way you can classify a polygon. I know my pictures look a little different, but hopefully the first one should say triangle, right? So here's a picture of a triangle. And we know that all three of those angles add to. 180, you've known that for a long time. Okay? If you have four sides, we call that a quadrilateral. That should mean your notes too, right? And the reason why all four of these angles in a quadrilateral add to 360 is because look, how many triangles do we have in there? Two. Two, and two times 180 is 360. Okay, we'll worry about the rest of this column. In a later chapter, you can kind of cross that off. We're not going to be worried about those. And I'm not too worried about these pictures either, so you don't have to draw those in your packet. But what I am worried about is naming what these other shapes are called, just because they come up a little bit. Um, if you have five sides to a figure, do you know what that's called? Pentagon. That's your pentagon. Yep. Pentagon. Pentagon, yep. It has five sides, it's a pentagon. Six? Hexagon. Hexagon, yeah. Seven's a weird one. Uh, uh, yeah, we always have to say heptagon, something with an S, but it's actually heptagon. Hepta. Yep, eight is octagon. Think of an octopus has eight legs. Octagon. Some of you remember this one for an octopus. Yeah. Squid. Nine is another weird one. Anyone? Nonagon. 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 Yep. Ten. Pentagon. Pentagon. Yeah, someone said that earlier today too. But no. <laughs> Not Pentagon. Anyone? This one's Decagon. Oh. Um, if you think about how many years in the decade? Ten, so Deca, ten. Twelve. Another weird one. You don't use it too often. Twelve again. That'd be nice if it was 12 a gone. But this one is dodecagon. There is a name for 11. We don't use it very often or hardly at all. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But basically anything after 12, like you get 13 sides or 14 sides or 37 sides, you put the number and then dash gone. So, for example, if you had 37 sides, it would be a 37 gone. There would be a number called the letter N. Yeah, the letter N. I'm teaching you guys a new number today. It's called N. Yeah. So, 
So anything basically after 12, the number, and then dash bond would be what you would call it. That would be a good reference for you to have in your notes, just having those names down there. Oops, I didn't mean to hit that button. And the last thing we are going to do is just finding a missing angle of a quadrilateral. I want to scroll down. Uh, it's just like finding the missing angle of a triangle, but instead of subtracting from 180, we're going to subtract from 360 because there's four angles, okay? So, anyone need a calculator? Okay, so like we said, all four of our angles add to 360. So we're going to take 360 and then subtract away. And you guys let me know what you end up with. Get 60? Perfect. 60 across the board that everyone got. Perfect. Whew. So angle K measures 60 degrees. And then this last example here, the same thing, but the only issue is, is we have a variable, right? So I think it's easier if we maybe write this one out and then um, we'll solve it how we normally solve an equation. So we know they have to add to 360. And now we're going to put all four of these things added together on the other side. So like 65 plus 130 plus 65 plus 4x. So if we add our like terms, what do you guys get when you take 65 plus 130 plus 65? 260? That sounds right. And now we have an equation that we've solved many times before. What do we move first? The numbers. The numbers, yeah. Let's subtract over that 260. So 360 minus 260 is 100, yep, equals 4x. We'll divide out. Let me know what you get, folks. 25. 25. Perfect. We did it. Okay. Not too bad.